Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I'm under the communal fire overhang here down at the classroom at the Pathfinder School. And we've got a large fire pit back here that we use for students to have as a community fire, whether they're doing cooking or drying out tender sources for the next day, all those types of things this community fire pit is used for here at the school. It's full of debris right now that was from the end of the year. It's been sitting under here for quite a while, so there's a lot of small stuff in there that I'll be able to burn. I'm gonna take advantage of this fire today. I'm gonna to show you how to make a loaded potato soup in a single bush pot. We'll talk about mixing the ingredients. We'll talk about things that you bring with you from home and how to pack that so that nothing has to be refrigerated. Everything's easy to carry and you've got a nice hearty potato soup at the end that you can cook very quick on a campfire. Stay with me guys. Okay, you can see this fire pit is full of shreds of debris from bark to small pieces of wood. Most of it's pretty dried out now. It's been in this overhang for a couple weeks. So some of it's got notches in it where pieces and parts of things were built. That's a good long one. I'll hang on to that and poke the fire with. Well, let's get some of this burning and then we'll start working with this fire to begin the cooking process. Okay, step one of this puzzle is we're gonna bake some potatoes. How many potatoes? Depends on how many people you have in the party. If it's only you, you might only need two or three. If you got more people, you might need five or six. We're just gonna take our square rack and drop it in our bush pot like this, which allows us to make it basically a convection oven. And then we're going to take our potatoes. Potatoes are easy to carry. They don't go off very quickly. I like these small ones because they cook pretty fast. And we'll just take, uh, eh, trying to decide between three and four, they're pretty small. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put four in here and we're just gonna set them in on the rack, just like this. So we've got four potatoes in our bush pot rack and now we're going to put this down in a bed of coals, which are going to range from the fire with our shovel. Okay, so now we take our bush pot, we're setting it here against the edge and we're going to start robbing some coals from our fire, knowing that we're gonna to have to continually build that up to get more coals and put them on both sides of the bush pot and start baking. We'll build more coals up and take more, and we'll monitor this. It's gonna take pretty close to 45 minutes probably, maybe a little less for those four potatoes. Now don't be afraid to drop a few dry sticks and things like that around this bush pot, because if they flame up, it'll be a very short-lived flame. It's not gonna hurt anything. It'll just help your coal bed go. Another thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of coal in the front of that thing and it's fairly close to your fire. You've got a combination working for you there of kind of a reflector oven and a convection oven at the same time. And it doesn't take as many coals as you think it does to cook food. So be careful with that as well. You'll burn those potatoes. Okay, while we're waiting on those potatoes to get baked over there, and before we go over the ingredients that we're going to carry in with us, let's talk real quick about cooking tools, utensils, for a woodland scenario, not something where I've got a vehicle and I'm gonna camp and bring in, you know, the, the cast iron and all the goodies. This is just kind of like almost minimal stuff. And I like to carry wood in that case because wood is lightweight. I've got utensils to eat with that are made out of stainless steel, fairly small. We'll talk about that as well, but this is the things that I use to cook with most of the time. And I can also eat with this spoon if I don't need a fork and I can just use my knife or a stick to poke a piece of meat with if I need a fork. I don't eat a lot of vegetables, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Now, what we've got here is we've got four pieces that are all multifunctional for the most part, and we'll all do things I need them to do in the woods. This is a called a noggin. It's not a kuksa. It's a noggin. And it was used for either ladling food, or it was also used for drinking out of, similar to a kuksa. But this is a, an American woodcraft type tool, the noggin, okay? And this one's made out of bird's eye maple, if I remember right. Most of these I made myself, the spoon I didn't, but I plan on duplicating the spoon myself as well. The rest of this is all reclaimed lumber from my knife shop. This handy spatula right here is made from curly maple. It works for flipping anything, stirring anything, scraping the bottom of pans, things like that. All of that can be done with this one wood spatula. It's very simple in nature. This is probably one of my favorite tools. I've got a cook spoon here that has a straight edge on it down at the bottom so it can scrape around the 90 degree edges or those slightly curved edges of bush pots and things like that. And it can also be used as a serving spoon as well because it has a concavity in it and a little bit of upward crank to it. This is made out of black walnut. And then I have this other spoon 
Again, this was store bought. I think I only paid a couple bucks for it at some place like Jungle Gems or something. It's probably bamboo or red red oak or something like that. I'm going to recreate this spoon out of some material from the knife shop at some point. But this works really good for stirring the bush pot, eating out of the bush pot. This is just a really good kind of eating and serving type spoon. But it doesn't get down into corners and things to scrape as good to get food out of the bush pot as this one does. It's designed for that purpose. And obviously not doesn't scrape as well as something like this would. But this is great for a skillet more than a bush pot. This is great for a bush pot more than a skillet. Then something to be able to dip food out if you want to and eat out of it or drink out of it. And then obviously an eating spoon. So those four utensils I carry most of the time. Keep them oiled up. Keep them nice. They'll last forever. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to do at home to bring us together in camp without having to refrigerate anything having to pack a whole bunch of stuff so we're going to get ourselves a couple ziploc bags just small ziploc bags and we're going to get some potatoes the potatoes we can carry loose if we want to we can wrap them in a shemag a bandana it doesn't matter they don't need to be ziploc okay we're going to take one of our ziploc bags we're going to add some ingredients to this ziploc bag that are dry ingredients a little at a time here now i'm going to use the spoon that I eat with a lot of times as my measuring device because it's a constant. I don't know if it's one full tablespoon or what it is. I don't know. I don't care. This is just my constant, okay? So I'm going to use it to measure with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some cornstarch. And cornstarch is just going to be a thickening agent. The potatoes will thicken a little bit on their own. I'm going to use a half of that spoon of cornstarch. Again, it's just a thickener. The starch and potatoes will thicken it as well. This is just going to help it out. I've got some dehydrated milk here. Going to give it a little bit of creaminess and a little bit more thickening. I'm going to put two full ones in here, okay? Two full. Not necessarily heaping, but full. I put one in before I turn the camera on. So there's two in there. So we got cornstarch so far and dried milk. Now, seasoning, garlic pepper is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to use about a half of a teaspoon if I can get this to come out of there. Keep this stuff out and about. It kind of gets chunky on you. I'm going to fill that to about halfway. That might be just a little bit more than half, but it's close enough. We're going to add that to our dry mix. It's in here. like that the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add some powdered cheddar cheese mix okay i keep all this stuff in ziploc bags in my trailer for my jeep to use them in camps and things like that if you don't have that kind of conveyance you make things smaller like this to put in your pack and i'm going to use two full heaping spoons of this so there's one Two. All right. Zip that back up and close her down. Now, the last thing I'm going to add to this mix is going to be some Oscar Mayer real bacon bits. Now, I could carry bacon that was pre cooked. I could cook it and use that. This is easier. What I don't want to do is I don't want to carry the whole pack and I don't want to dump them into this dry good mix. So, I'm going to use a separate bag for that. I would put what I need in there. I'd say that's probably pretty good for a bush pot. Might want to put a little bit more in there than that, but not much. Okay, we'll call that good. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to shake this down to the bag. We're going to roll this down fairly small to get any air out of it. And we're going to seal it up, make sure we've got it sealed. We're going to put that inside this bag, just like this. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to squeeze this down and we're going to seal it up once we get to the end of it there, just like that. And this is going to be basically our traveling soup mix along with our potatoes. So once we get our potatoes done, we'll be ready to utilize this packet.
Okay, looking at those potatoes, I would say they're getting fairly close. I'll give them about five more minutes here and we'll give them a check. All right, let's check these potatoes out here. Oh yeah, nice and cooked right through. Okay, ready for the next step. Okay, so we've taken our bush pot and we've filled it about half full of water. And we're collecting our coals now into a central location. We're kind of letting it burn down to a coal bed because we don't want to cook on flame now. We want good radiant constant heat. We're going to use this stand for our bush pot, just put it right down the coals so we get a good even heat across the bottom of our bush pot. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to our bag of ingredients here. And we're going to pull out the bacon bit packet because we're not gonna use that right away. Shake all the dust off of it. The rest of this we're gonna put in the bush pot, into the water. And we're going to slowly heat this up and stir it until it begins to thicken. Then we're going to add our potatoes while they're still warm. And we just have to let that water warm up and absorb all of this. Dry mix. Thicken up a little bit. And then we'll add our potatoes to that. Okay, now that we got this good and warm, we're going to come in here and put our potatoes in. And we're just going to leave the skins on. Basically, you just cut them four ways and then across the middle, throw them in the pot. Really hot next to this fire. Fire is a lot hotter than you think it is. Pretty good, pretty good. Get a lid on this dude and let it start to cook down into more of a soup. Now we're getting somewhere fast. Now we got some steam coming off of it and thicken that stuff up. Let this fire die down, just let it sit there and simmer with the lid on for a while. We'll be good. All right, so we took it off the fire, we're letting it cool down now. And now we're to the point where we're gonna add these bacon bits. We really just want to get them warmed up in there, get them mixed in good because they're already cooked. We don't need to cook them much more. And now while this thing's still good and hot, we're just gonna kind of stir it up really good, put the lid on it, let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes to cool down. And then we're gonna be ready to try this bad boy. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Lots of potato in there. All right, folks, I guess the proof is in the pudding here. Let's see where we're at. Not too bad. It's pretty good. This is where that trencher comes in. Real handy, being used for a ladle. I think I'm just going to eat it right out of the pot, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, man. Holy crap. That's really good potato soup, oh man. So if I was gonna say anything about that recipe, I would possibly, possibly reduce my water to begin with. Maybe uh, to more like a half a bush pot. I think it's a little higher than that when I filled it up. And uh, it's a little thinner than I want it to be, but it is soup. But man, is it good, holy cow. Folks, I really appreciate you joining me out here today for this video on how to make that loaded potato soup. It takes about an hour and a half of total cook time because you have to bake those potatoes beforehand. You could just boil them and semi-mash them up and it would probably be fine. I just prefer to bake them when I'm making potato soup versus boiling them if I'm making some kind of a mashed potato dish or something like that. Whew, I'm burping that stuff. <laughs> Man, that was good. Holy cow. Excuse me, folks. <clears throat> anyway. Back to what I was going to say. It is New Year's Eve today while I'm out here making this video. And so I wanted to thank you all very, very much for the support 
of our school, the support of my business online, the support of my instructors and their YouTube channels. Obviously, most of you are familiar with Corporal's Corner. Got Black Hat Bushcraft out there making videos, Salty Dog Outdoors out there making videos, Adaptable Survival out there making videos, Pooter Stomper Anthony Powers out there making trapping videos this year. All of my instructors are busy making videos this year for you guys to enjoy their content. I'd appreciate if you'd stop by their channels and hit a, hit a subscribe and hit a notification bell. Do the same thing on my channel as well. So again, guys, I really hope that you have a fantastic new year and I thank you so much for all the support in 2021. Here's to an awesome 2022 for all of you out there and I hope that all of your dreams come true next year. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you again for everything you do for our instructors, our family, our business, our affiliates, and all of our friends. I'll be back with another video in 2022, guys. Thanks.